Today I'm going to talk about the roof line performance analysis with the clay pad on blue waters. Uh, this is a result of the team effort of the CIS group, the Galen, Jing, Ryan, Celso, and Greg. And uh, it doesn't work. Okay. So let me briefly talk about the uh, roof line anal performance analysis. Someone knows about that. Someone doesn't know. So. Uh, it's very, uh, the roof line analysis, performance analysis is very um, visually intuitive uh, performance model because it's useful for projecting your application performance to the current system and the future system. And it also, you can also characterize, uh, characteristic, uh, characterize your application uh, and uh, you can also uh, access, uh, assess the application performance relative to machine capability. And it also motivates you to improve your algorithm to get the better performance. Uh, it basically has uh, two uh, performance envelopes. So you can see so two performance envelopes here. So the play line, the peak flop uh, rate, this is uh, one of the uh, machine capability. And the other is uh, memory bandwidth here. And the x-axis, we have the computation intensity, which is the ratio of the floating point operation over data transfer. So uh, every machine has uh, the machine balance point at here. So uh, we call this machine uh, balance point. So if your application computation, computation intensity is less than this point, we can say your application is uh, memory bound. Otherwise, we can say your ma machine is compute bound. But it's not always true. Uh, your application is always memory bound or computation or computer bound. It depends on the system architecture. So in some application, your application may be memory bound, but other application, your, your application can be compute bound. So depending on the, uh, this characteristic, uh, how to optimize your code could be totally different. Okay, this reply analysis model can be extended to hierarchical model if we consider the memory hierarchy and the different optimization level. So as you know, the, we have the multiple uh, caches and on blue waters, we have the L1, L2, L3 caches, and we don't have HPM, but the HPM is kind of the new trend in H HPC, HPC uh, architecture. And we have the D uh, DDR, uh, DDR memory. Uh, for the peak flop rate, uh, we have uh, considered some different conditions. One is uh, you have to use a special instruction. On blue waters case, you have to use FMA4 instruction, or if you use uh, modern, more, your processor, you may consider the AVX instruction, AVX, AVX2, AVX512, depending on your architecture. And you also need to consider the CIMD operation. So uh, depending on the factorization length, so you, can, you may have uh, the uh, highest peak rate, or you may use just half of that or fourth of that. And you also need to hide your FPU latency. So based on that, you, you may have uh, three different uh, uh, the play loop. So the best one is a peak flop, but if you cannot use, uh, for some reason, if you cannot use uh, uh, instruction, uh, specialized instruction, you may, you may have this kind of peak flop, or your algorithm cannot uh, use uh, factorization at all, so you, you are, uh, the maximum peak is here. Okay, so one way to perform the roofline analysis is using Intel Advisor. Intel Advisor provided the roofline feature from 2017 version two. So, and if you use the internal advisor, you can have the, this performance or in, in, uh, information, timing, plots, hardware counter data, or factorization tip, and memory footprint. And it also provides the cache aware roofline model. So this is one of the practice uh, uh, Galen at our group performed uh, last year. Uh, he used the internal advisor for the CART DG code, which is uh, our one of graduate fellows um, code. And we use uh, uh, the KNL uh, node at, at NCSA. This, we have the very small KNL box, and we use that. And using Intel Advisor, we uh, do the root plan analysis. So this is a screenshot, snapshot of the Intel Advisor. So it provides very uh, GUI-based uh, pretty application. But uh, through this application, we realized that it, Intel Advisor has several um, limitation for the HPC application. Oops. The limitation is uh, Intel Advisor does not support any other vendor's processor, of course. So Blue Water, we, we don't have Intel processor, we have Intel, Intel Advisor. The another thing is, uh, if you see the recent HPC architecture trend, uh, Intel is not the only solution. Uh, some people are very interested in the ARM processor. Uh, recently, the uh, UK launched uh, the ARM-based HPC system, and it seems uh, uh, very, um, 
good solution per dollar. And the AMD seems back to the HPC market using the Epic processor. So if some HPC center use AMD, uh, we can use Intel Advisor. The another big part of the HPC is a GPU. Uh, we cannot use Intel Advisor for GPU at all. The another issue, even with the Intel, uh, Intel processor, the issue is uh, the Intel Advisor is just compatible with the Intel, uh, Intel compiler. So if for some reason, if your application is optimized with the Quake compiler, you cannot use that, or PGI, or ARM, ARM compiler, so you cannot use that. The another uh, critical issue is uh, it requires at least a two execution. One is a survey analysis, the other is trip count analysis with flop, and one of them is really slow. So if you wanna perform your uh, loop line analysis for very large scale computation, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think uh, Internet Advisor work for that. Uh, in our case, uh, we needed to uh, measure the SPP, sustained parascale benchmark, uh, parascale performance benchmark code. Uh, one of the application needed to use 8,000 nodes on blue waters. In that case, uh, we don't think uh, we can use the Internet Advisor. So we wanted to find out a way uh, to run the roof line analysis on the blue waters. So we chose um, a way to use the hardware performance counter. So first issue is uh, how to measure the computation intensity. Computation in intensity is the ratio of the flop, flop over data transfer. So we have to find out the good hardware counter to measure these two components. So for that, uh, we wrote, uh, we wrote uh, uh, a kernel uh, to, uh, to find out the hardware counter. Uh, this kernel is to computing the nth order geometric series. This is a mathematical expression of geometric series. The reason we choose this, uh, this e e equation is it just requires only two data transfers, so one read and one write. So depending on the implementation type and optimization type, the plot can be changed. So in this process, we just uh, look at the data transfer uh, measurement. And we consider, again, we wanted to uh, find out some generally available uh, approach. So we consider uh, more than 4,000 test case in terms of the different order of series and the different array size per MPI rank and different variables. We consider single precision and double precision. And you also consider different compilers, GNU compiler, Quake compiler, and PGI compiler on blue waters, and also different optimization level. Someone use uh, O0, someone use O3, O2, O1, so we consider the O0 to O3. And intentionally, we implement the three different ways, inline, recursive loop, and flat loop. The reason is uh, many science, science, uh, science scientist group uh, started with the same uh, mathematical expression, but depending on the developer and developer's group, implementation type can be totally different, so uh, it can, the final uh, the performance can be totally different. So we also want to consider that effect. So the inline implementation, uh, we just uh, compute all the geometric series in one line. The other recursive loop, we reuse m minus one order geometric series by multiplying m plus one. The plat loop, this is another uh, reusing um, uh, implementation, but we just add m to the n. Oops. Okay. So uh, again, so we need to find out the optimal hardware counter for, for to measure the data transfer. So we investigate a lot of the hardware counter blue waters, but in this talk we will just uh, discuss the two hardware counter. The one is L1 DCA, means level one uh, data cache access. Uh, the reason we choose one, this one as one uh, case is uh, this is a crate pet default hardware counter for the computing computation intensity. And the other is our recommendation, DCR good, data cache refill from L2 or no switch good with good final condition. And uh, uh, after uh, the validation, uh, it turned out that this one is the, one of the best uh, hardware counter on Blue Waters. And in this validation process, we needed to instrument our code with QuakePad. So uh, we use, uh, we wanna see the very uh, specific kernels uh, we, we, can ma uh, we can manually compute. So uh, we uh, just focus on uh, that kernel using the QuakePad API. So if you're interested in QuakePad API, the last week we have the tutorial session so we can, you can see, you can find out the material. And also you can uh, send us email. And uh, uh, to enable the Crepin API, we uh, instrument with the pet build, and uh, we use um, the runtime environment to select uh, this hardware counter, so pet RT perp CTR. So I will show you a little bit more details here later. And this is the uh, first result uh, for the precision of the hardware counter. So as I told you, the computing geometric series just requires two data transfers. So 
for any order of the geometric series, the data transfer should be the same. Uh, this one, the upper one shows the all three optimization, the lower one shows all zero optimization. The X axis uh, has a lot of characters, but ju it just means the combination of the compiler type, data type, the data size, and the implementation type. So, uh, and the Y axis is uh, coefficient variation, which means a standard deviation over mean. So for any order of the geometric series, the variation should be zero. So if you have some uh, non-zero value, which means that that hardware counter precision is not great. So blue lines represent L1 DCA based measurement for the single precision and double precision. And the red one and yellow one shows uh, DCA group based uh, measurement for single precision and double precision. So from this result, we can say uh, DCA group shows very precise result, but we don't know what is, uh, we don't know still this is the correct or not, but we can say the uh, precision is very nice. And this is for the same data for different representation. This is just uh, the span of the minimum and maximum. So in optimal case, this span should be very, very small. So we want to see a couple of cases, what's going on. So this case, uh, all the coefficient variation is very close uh, for both of the hardware counter. And this is, this is another representation, the, the, the data, uh, the detailed data. So here you can see the three different colors. The blue one shows L1 DCA, the green shows DCA good, and red is uh, manually counted the exact value. And in all cases, even though the blue one has some glitch here, but uh, in general we can say, oh, both of other color works very um, accurately. But the worst case, you can see the red, uh, the green and red shows a very nice match, but the blue one shows the uh, very wrong data in some case. Uh, the blue can be totally off, and we can see that. So we just uh, draw um, the, uh, to see the accuracy, we draw the ratio of the exact uh, uh, byte measurement mean over the exact transfer, and uh, if, if this ratio is one, which means uh, this is very accurate. So again, the red and the yellow shows uh, very close to one, so they show very accurate data, but the L1 DCA shows uh, uh, very incorrect data. So from this, uh, this validation test, we could find out uh, one of uh, uh, the nice uh, hardware counter to measure the data transfer. And then we want to move on, uh, actually compute the computational series. So for this uh, study, we uh, wrote a very simple uh, 2D, 3D stencil code. And using the Quaypad API here, so we just isolate the, the corner we are interested in. And for this corner, we computed the, the plops and data movement and computation intensity for DP and SP. And we tested the 72 test cases in terms of the stencil size and the variable type and different compilers and different optimization. And first com comparison is for the plop measurement. The good thing is our processor has really accurate the plop counter. So our plop counter is really accurate for, for all the cases. The result is really accurate. And again, the data transfer. So this is the byte measurement. So measurement over the exact, uh, exact. So compared to previous case, uh, the, the error is a little bit larger, but uh, we still can say, we cannot say this is accurate, but the uh, uh, yellow and red, which means uh, from the DCI good, still shows very nice approximation. So uh, we, can, we can use that for the computation, computation intensity. So this is uh, based on the L1 DCA, and this is based on DCI good. So we decided to use uh, DCI good for the uh, loop line analysis on blue waters. Okay, so this is a detailed instruction how to use a root line model on blue waters. Okay, first of all, we have to measure the roof line. What is the uh, maximum performance of blue line XE node? So for that, there are several ways, but we use uh, empirical loop line toolkit, and we tested uh, all the compilers available on not all the compilers except Intel. GNU create PGI compilers uh, on the blue waters. And we also consider the three different peak flop rate. The highest one is the factor FMA peak, which means with all the SIMD operation and FMA4 instruction. The second highest one is with SIMD, but without FMA instruction. The lowest one is without SIMD, without FMA4 instruction. And I briefly talk about the, um, the memory hierarchy of the XC node. We have a 32 core for one XC and one XC node, and 16 FPU and four NUMA domain. And uh, uh, for L1 data cache, we have the 16 kilobytes for each integer core. For L2, we have the two megabytes for each FPU. And L3, we have eight megabytes for each NUMA domain. So after all the tests, 
uh, we got the, this loop line for the XE. So you don't need to repeat again. So our package already know this information, so you can just use our package. So I just want to show how we measure the, uh, the rate. So one thing is uh, we prefer to use a measured uh, capacity, not the peak capacity provided by the uh, processor. So in, in our experience, uh, there's uh, some big deviation. OK, so first of all, we have to uh, get the performance data from the crate path. So for that, uh, you need to unload Darshan because of conflict, and you need to load perp tool base and, and perp tool. And then you need to build your application from uh, scratch, right? So I just show you the hello world uh, example. So compiled, and then you will have this kind of warning. It's not actual warning. And then I have the a.out, which is, which is the executable binary. And then what you need to do is you need to instrument uh, your executable binary using path build. So I use the path build w a.out. And then you will have a.out plus path. So in order to get the performance data, you have to use a.out plus path instead of your original instrument, original executable binary. Okay, and then you need to run uh, plus path executable with the environmental variable. This is very important because we have to get a, a specific hardware counter data, so you have to uh, add this tool line. If you use uh, the batch, uh, batch uh, I mean the JavaScript, you have to add this tool line before your app run command. So export path RT summary zero and export pad RT, perp CTR, and data cache field. This is DCR good, and PEPI L1 DCA, this L1 DCA just for the reference. And the, and the PEPI FP OPS, this is your uh, uh, the blob rate counter. And then run the, your plus path executable, so F1 N32 and uh, the instrumented binary. And then it will tell you your credit version, and it will. Uh, uh, generate the this XF file. So if your uh, MPI rank is uh, more than 512, uh, you will not have the XF file. You will have a, a folder that has multiple XF files. So uh, depending on the number of MPI rank, but uh, you will have, obviously, you will have some raw data from the cray pad. And then now you have this XF file. And then you need to create the, your cray pad report using pad, pad report. So in this case, I use the pad report dash O and your XF file. Uh, dash O and uh, I just named the CrayPad report by myself and then I added XF file. And then you will have uh, this CrayPad report. After that, what you need to do is uh, we, we, uh, we made uh, some uh, simple Python script called the General Loop Line Evaluation Gadget. Uh, acronym is GREC. Uh, <laughs> so you can just clone. We just uh, uh, posted this on NCSA Git repository, so you can just clone uh, this one. Let me briefly show you. Uh, here. This is uh, our NCSA uh, public Git repository, so uh, there is a very simple uh, Instruction: How to use Graypad on, on Blue Waters, and how to use how, how you use uh, this uh, package on Blue Waters. So first of all, you need to clone your uh, the Grack uh, on 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 your Blue Waters account. Uh, there are two ways. One way is you can uh, clone this one on your laptop. And then you can just download your CrayPad report to your laptop and process it on your laptop. Or you may uh, uh, download this package on your Bluebird account. And using the uh, BWPy module, you can also process on the Bluebird login node. OK, so git clone, Greg. And I will show you this one. And if you go to Greg source, you will see these uh, three objects. Uh, the second object is uh, your Python script to analyze your CrayPad report. So I named, uh, we named the Greg CrayPad AMD Intrago. The reason is uh, uh, if you get the next generation system, next system we will have the different uh, uh, CPU architecture. In that case, we will uh, make another Python script. And uh, we also are, uh, we also working on, uh, wor working on some other general uh, profiler, for example, Perf. So if we, develop, if we complete the development, we will also add another Python script for the perp without the CrayPad. OK, 
Okay, and then uh, how to use the crack? It's very simple. Just call the Python 3, and uh, this uh, crack, crackpad AMD interval with the pi, and then you just need to mention your uh, crackpad report. So in this test case, uh, the location of crackpad report is here. So if you do that, it will just uh, give you some uh, brief description of your uh, crackpad report, uh, number of MPI, MPI per RAM, node, and compute node thread, and uh, memory footprint. And then it will generate the two um, loop line plots. One is L1 DCA based and the other DCR good based. We highly recommend to use the DCR based uh, the, uh, loop line uh, plot because uh, as, as we showed you, uh, the L1 DCA based one's computation test is not uh, reliable. So, uh, but the, just as a reference, uh, we just, it, it just uh, generated two uh, PNG files. So, here, your, your query report name, and then loop line DCR group PNG. This is a DCR group based uh, your loop line plot, and this is a L1 DCA based loop line plot. So this is uh, the detailed instruction, how to use uh, our package on Blue Waters. And let me show you a couple of, uh, a couple of example how we, uh, how we could use uh, this uh, package for the uh, HPC benchmark and the popular corners. The first example is uh, the, uh, our handwritten 5.2D uh, five, five tensor code. I compiled with the Cray compiler with O3 optimization. Uh, it's very simple compiler, so we can uh, manually compute uh, the memory usage. So this is a uh, tensor size. This is for single precision, double precision, memory usage. The one thing is, uh, as I told you, um, our L2 data cache, uh, for one core, we have one megabyte L2 data cache. So based on the memory usage size, these three cases are less than uh, L2 data cache size. So we can expect uh, this performance will be bounded by the L2 data cache performance uh, bandwidth, and others, are, others will be bounded by DD, uh, DDR RAM bandwidth uh, performance. So here we can found these uh, three uh, cases that here and other cases here. And this is a very interesting case. This is uh, this case. The memory usage is slightly larger than the L2 data cache size. It's why the performance is just somewhere between the L2 data uh, cache bandwidth and the DDR uh, bandwidth. And this is another example for uh, 3D, but the uh, uh, K2C is very similar. The another test is uh, we uh, performed uh, we um, performed the HPC CG benchmark with high performance conjugate gradient benchmark. This is one of the new uh, HPC benchmark. Uh, we built it with the GNU compiler with O3 optimization, and we used 128 MPI rank on the 4x3 node, and we assigned the different size of Q for MPI rank to see the, uh, if, if this application is cache effect or not. But it turned out everything is bounded by DDR, DRAM bandwidth. So the thing is, um, uh, if your application uh, is bounded by DD, DRAM bandwidth, uh, your future system, you can, you, can, you can select a couple of the vendors. So uh, generally, the Intel processor has very high performance cache bandwidth, but the, the DRAM bandwidth is slightly slower than the other computers. And uh, again, the AMD and ARM, they have a higher memory bandwidth. So if your application is something like this one, you may go with uh, ARM or AMD or GPU, not uh, Intel. The next case is HP GMG uh, benchmark. This is a high performance uh, geometry multigrid uh, benchmark for the finite volume. And again, use, uh, we used uh, GNU and 512 MPI rank on 16XE, and we also assigned the different size of cube. The interesting thing is that when you assign very small size of Q, we have very low performance, but when you assign the very large size of Q, we get very high performance. This is opposite to the cache effect. So we look into the CrayPad report, and it turned out the FMGF cycle has a very severe load balance depending on the problem size. So here, this is basic abstract um, graph of the FG, uh, HPGMG. The red zone shows very little MPI rank is used for the computation. The yellow zone shows the part of the MPI rank used for the computation. The green zone, all MPI rank is used for the computation. So if you solve a very small problem, for example, at here, your solution process almost located in the red and uh, yellow zone, so your load imbalance is quite significant. It is why your average performance is very low. But if you solve a very large problem, it goes to up to here, and uh, 
uh, all processor can be used so many, many uh, all the time, so your load imbalance becomes negligible. It is why it gets very high performance. So again, this code is very uh, well written uh, and well optimized for the cache, cache usage. So if your application is uh, something like this one, maybe Intel processor is a good choice for better performance. And this is comparison of the sparse linear server. So we just compare uh, three of them, the patchy uh, for the iterative server, and the mums and SuperLU for the direct sparse direct server. And for we, we solved the same, exactly the same problem uh, for four different sites, uh, 10K to two, mega, two million unknowns. And uh, uh, we solved that problem on the two different nodes, uh, two different uh, node configuration. One is on 16 MPI on one XC, the other is uh, 512 MPI on 32 XC. So you can simply think these uh, different choices for the simple strong scaling test. Uh, this is the result of the patchy iterative server. What we can see is the all cases computation intensity is very consistent. So uh, the reason we can observe the uh, very nice scalability uh, from the iterative server is uh, its, its computation intensity doesn't change over the scaling test. So uh, our obtainable uh, uh, performance per node is fixed. So if you use a more node, we may have some cache effect and we may have some better performance. I'm not talking about the, 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 the uh, stability, but uh, just, just for the com computational performance. But uh, if we go to sparse direct server, the different thing happen. So these three points are on the one XC node, and these, these three, three points are on, on uh, 32 XC node. What happened is because of the, the different algorithm, the direct server, if you use more MPI rank, um, the computation intensity on the more MPI rank shifted to the left. So it's most obtainable, the performance become lower than the, uh, with smaller MPI case. So it is why we can observe the sparse, sparse direct server is really good for stability, but uh, in some case, the scalability is not really uh, great. So that can be one of the reasons we observe that feature. Okay, so we provide a, a, a reliable and practical method for roofline analysis with CrayPad, uh, which is uh, compatible with uh, various compiler. And it also can be extended to other processor, AMD, ARM, GPU, again, Intel as well. And this is very scalable approach. So it's uh, scalable as much as CrayPad is. And uh, we provide this very subtle uh, validation uh, for the selected hardware performance counter. And we can also do the same thing for the next system if we have. And crepe, uh, we also provide some simple discussion of crepe based root plan analysis for the HPCG, GMG, Patchy, MOMS, and SuperLU. And this is not the end. We plan to perform the similar analysis on our GPU side as well and the other processor. And we also share the, our uh, Python script through the NCSAQ repository. So